Well, it's um, in terms of a melodic composition, you go where the music takes you. I, I, in this case, but usually in playing, I usually um, they call it the cash register. Yeah. I was told <laughs> the lower register. Um, but I find like playing in the. Um, it's funny you say that. Um, I've had to. Um, I got into sitting down a lot playing in the studio, but preferably I like playing. I grew up standing up playing, so it's natural for me to play because I feel the rhythm, I feel the groove, as opposed to sitting down. Um, so, but this area here is accessible when you're sitting down, so it's easy to play sitting down in your high register. Um, it's harder to play in the upper register because it's it gets you know it gets tight. But if anything, it just takes practice. If I'm playing a line, if I'm playing in, in the, the jazz tradition, or um, actually any tradition of music, the music's going to expand. So I'm going to, I might change the register. Going from, um, let me give you an example of that. Um, well, I did with the, um, that was um, Kingpins. But normally, if I'm playing a, a walking line, I'm going to play the range of the instrument, basically. As the music goes on, I'm going to go higher. With the soloist is going on higher, I'm going to go higher with the soloist. I will play do whatever it takes to make the music come alive. That's basically the name of the game. To bring the music to life, because what's on the paper and what's in your head necessarily isn't what is really going to make people's feet, feet tap. You know, get, to, get, them out to, get them out their seats. So you have to go with your gut instincts and be um, able to incorporate distractions. A lot of distractions that are going on internally, externally. And I learned to incorporate the distractions. Basically, if I see something going on in the audience, I might try to, you know, get with that while I'm playing. Is this a natural thing that we learn? I've learned to do over the course of my playing career, especially playing live. In the studio, you don't have that. All you have is a title. So you got to go with the title. What does the title mean? What does it reflect? What am I, what are they trying to say? How can I make that title come alive? And then it becomes meaningful to me. I've been in situations where they hand you a piece of paper and there's a demo situation. Well, we got the change, but we don't know the name of the song yet. Okay, well, I'm gonna play. Well, let's, you know, here's the tempo. You make up something with the tempo, basically. Um, it happens, and but what you're playing, they'll make a song based upon that, which is kind of like, you know, backwards, but this is what they get away with um, when we, um, back in the day, and probably still today, you know. <laughs> oh. Well, a lot of a lot of times, but uh, you know, the funny thing is, you can't copyright a baseline. You can't um, you cannot copyright a baseline as much as you um, love them and hear them. You cannot um, you cannot copyright them. So we have um, a couple of tunes here on the um, flash drive um, that might be of interest to you. Oh, people got to be free. Um, I'm going out of order here. Actually, I'm not telling the story of my life. The story of my life is in the book, and that's in chronological order. So I'm, I'm jumping around with what I feel. But the, um, the first records I made were actually with um, at the, a lot of the hits I made came out of the Hit Factory where B.B. King stuff came from. The Hit Factory, um, I mentioned before, I meant told you off camera about the story between Jerry Wexler and Jerry Ragavoy and Rick Fame, Rick Hall. Um, but there was a network of music going from one studio to another and the two other studios. They shared the music. And so the musicians were educated in terms of uh, different styles of music, which is very good. You want to share what you have. Um, but this one song here, um, People Gotta Be Free, is a song I did, but the, um, came about off a piece of paper with a title. And I had to come up with something that's going to make it sound free. This is a big hit back in 1968. Number one. Five weeks. Number one. And needed to be. I'm going to play along with it. That was written.
Now that part, the, the only part that was actually written out was the, um, we figured out that in the studio, that was okay, that was gonna be like the signature. So I had to put something around that, that represented freedom. So since that was structured, I had to go <clears throat> off the mark and play something that's out of time. That's how I came up with the line of, um, basically syncopation, okay? <laughs> I went that I went that route, and I also went my my Latin route, my Latin roots. Playing a lot, of, I played a lot of Latin music, and I loved a lot of, a lot of um, Afro jazz um, music coming up as a young musician. Um, like one of my favorite songs was this song here, "Night in Tunisia," written in 1944, two years before I was born. Okay, so, you know, I mean, this was the good stuff. So I discovered that and I've been playing it um, all my life, basically. Um, it's the, one of the few songs I actually, you know, remember that really kind of stuck with me because of the, um, the Latin aspect and being a black American, we didn't know too much about Africa back in those days. We knew about, but we knew had Latin music, which was kind of come from Africa, although we didn't know, necessarily know that but it felt good. And so we vibrated to the Latin music, the dancing, everything was there. So it's always been part of my life playing um, that Latin style of music. That's why when I played with B.B. King, what, he, what he's playing, I turned his music, I played a samba underneath um, the song that he became famous for playing, The Thrill Is Gone. And prior to that, we had done some things, um, a few months earlier, why I think the blues was kind of like off the mark for him because he usually played everything in terms of, um, let me see. Um, a, um, a shuffle. So I turned that to, um, I turned that into a, um, Sixteenth notes as opposed to triplet notes. And so he loved it. Everything worked well. It was a big hit. And then we went on to um, six, four months later, we came back in the studio and we did this, the record that was um, known as completely well with a lot of um, things on, including the Thrillers Gone, which was actually, he's playing the same minor blues.